On Monday morning, Raymore police and members of Johnson County, Kansas law enforcement agencies entered a storage locker in Raymore, Missouri, under a Cass County judge's order. And our top story tonight, a bizarre tale of sex and murder right out of a movie. Three 55-gallon drums were found, each sealed with tape and covered in plastic. It's a bizarre story of murder, sex, and the Internet. Each barrel contained the body of an unidentified adult female, Jane Doe's three four and five. The bodies of five women and a grisly trail of evidence. Tonight, police piece together what has become a mass murder case. Cass County Prosecutor Chris Coster and Johnson County, Kansas District Attorney Paul Morrison are combining forces to prosecute a serial killer. A killer, they say, who was involved in sadomasochistic relationships started up over the internet. This is CNN. Good morning. Can you first tell us why Robinson has not yet been charged with any of these deaths? Well, we have Robinson in custody right now, and there's a $5 million bond on his head, so he's not going anyplace. We have three bodies in Missouri, all yet to be identified, and it may be several days and perhaps weeks before we're able to identify them. Yeah, the FBI is going to be dredging a pond in Kansas today, draining it to see if more bodies are found, but you don't think they're going to find more bodies in that pond, do you? You know, there's only one person who knows the answer to that question. We're still looking. On, on Sunday, there were two bodies. On Monday, there were five bodies. I hope there are no more bodies. As long as Robinson is in custody in Kansas and under such a, a hefty bond, uh, there's no reason for us to rush over here. And the, the smartest thing that we can do is take this step by step. What started as a missing person report has grown into one of the biggest mass murder investigations in Kansas City history. Once the dental records were obtained, we moved those over to the regional crime lab up at Kansas City, and by late that evening, we had a, a positive identification. Bonner is the first of the three victims found in the Remor storage locker to be identified. Her family says she disappeared six years ago. They believed that perhaps she was still alive, uh, and of course, did not put that hope finally to rest until Friday night. Obviously, everybody in the family wants to see a very aggressive prosecution. The second of three female bodies discovered in a Raymore, Missouri storage shed was positively identified as that of Sheila Faith. Prosecutors outlined their case for the death penalty based on the reason they believe the crimes were committed. For the purpose of receiving money or any other thing of monetary value from his victims, John Robinson committed the offense of murder in the first degree in a manner outrageously or wantonly vile, horrible or inhuman in that it involved depravity of mind. And three, Johnny Robinson committed multiple homicides. Well, Phil, investigators say they've got two down and three to no, go. No prosecutor uh, wants to go in and file a Jane Doe case. Nobody wants to go in and file a case when the victim is unknown. Families deserve to know. The community needs to know who these people are. And I think that we're going to find out. How long it's going to take, I don't know yet. Even if we are never able to identify the women in the other two barrels, I'm very confident that we will be able to uh, prosecute those cases successfully. This is Dateline Monday, July 16, 2001. Tonight. Were all of these women killed the same way? It appears that they were killed in generally the same way. The charging document states that they were killed with either a hammer or a hammer-like instrument. Within 10 minutes of being there on the scene that day, I think you, you just knew that this was going to be the kind of case that every community hates to get. Prosecutor Chris Coster oversaw the 12-hour recovery process. That must have been a horrific scene. It was something I won't forget. In each of the barrels was the body of a female. It was clear that they hadn't been in there days or weeks. We were talking about years that these barrels had been hidden away. The family, I, I believe, knew that this was coming. And uh, uh, it's, it's a sad thing to have to communicate uh, to a family. Investigators in the case fear that the body count is now up to 11. A panel of 12 citizens meeting on the second floor of the Cass County Courthouse spent the day considering and may even, in fact, have issued an indictment against suspected serial killer John E. Robinson. The grand jury investigation is secret, and I'm not allowed to talk about matters that may or may not be in front of this grand jury. If it's possible to work out an agreement with the state of Kansas where we can bring this defendant back and forth across the state line, uh, then I'm very interested in trying to work out that kind of an agreement. It would certainly bring justice in two states much more quickly. 
Now, a grand jury was convened here in Harrisonville last week. Coster can't comment on whether or not they're considering the Robinson case. There's not a public airing of the evidence early in the case. It's not subject to cross-examination. Um, and because of that, the prosecutor is able to move it quickly up into the circuit courts. There are new charges in the case against a man accused of killing six women. Today's filings represent the culmination of the financial leg of this investigation. The state is alleging that John Robinson, knowing that Beverly Bonner was dead, fraudulently appropriated and deposited alimony checks paid by Dr. William Bonner in the belief that his former wife, Beverly, was alive. Some people have said, since we already have homicide charges against Robinson, that we shouldn't therefore expend the extra effort to prosecute him for all the other crimes that he may have committed. I disagree with that type of thinking. Cass County is going to pursue aggressively all of these cases in every aspect that they present themselves.